One very common theme in science fiction yeah, that you see in a lot of stories are planets that have not one sun, but two suns. Uh, the most famous example is probably Tatooine, Luke Skywalker's home planet in Star Wars. Scientists for many years had no evidence one way or the other whether there really were planets that circled two stars. Um, certainly there are lots of double star systems where we see two stars orbiting each other very tightly. What we didn't know is whether those double star systems had planets. You could make arguments either way. There's no reason why uh, you would be forbidden from forming planets around such stars. But on the other hand, we didn't know of any specific examples, and so we just were curious. Do such planets exist? Do circumbinary planets exist? It wasn't until 2010 that we had very clear and conclusive evidence that such planets do exist. The first really direct piece of evidence came from the Kepler Space Telescope. This is a telescope launched by NASA that did nothing for four and a half years except monitor the brightness of a sample of about 200,000 stars continuously. Every half an hour, it would record the precise brightness level of each of 200,000 stars. And what it found for a particular star, which has come to be known as Kepler-16, is that what looked like one star in the sky is actually two stars. And we know that because the stars eclipse one another. Every now and then, one star gets in front of the other one and blocks a lot of its starlight. And Kepler registers that as a dip in flux. But what's more than that, both of these stars are surrounded by a giant planet that's circling both of them. And we see that because the planet gets in front of each of the two stars once every time it goes around. And we can see those tiny little eclipses as well. So we see all of those different types of eclipses. And from the brightness variations of the single point of light in the sky, we're able to deduce that we have two stars and at least one planet going around both of them. That was the first really secure case of a circumbinary planet. So that was wonderful. That tells us immediately that these science fiction authors anticipated the truth. These planets are not especially rare. We now know of at least 10 circumbinary planets, like Kepler-16. Another nice thing is that it allows us to make unusually precise measurements of the planet's size and mass. Usually, when we have one planet going around one star, we can learn the planet's size and mass, but with considerable uncertainty. Because, for example, in order to learn the mass of the planet, we measure how quickly the star is moving in response to that. And that tells us at least the ratio in mass between the planet and the star. But we have to assume something about the star's mass in order to calculate the planet's mass. Well, when you have more than two bodies, when you have three bodies, two stars and a planet going around them, it turns out you don't have to make any assumptions about the mass of any of those bodies. You get to measure all three of them in an unusually precise way. So the circumbinary planets, in addition to being theoretically interesting of how you form a planet around two stars, are also just very convenient in that they allow us to make very precise measurements of the dimensions of the stars and the planet going around. Now, when you have two stars going around each other, you can't put a planet too close to the environment around that, those stars because it would be unstable. The gravitational perturbations from those two stars going around would not allow a really close-in planet to exist for many years. It would eventually get either thrown onto the surface of one of those stars or thrown out of the system altogether. So there's a certain radius of exclusion around any pair of stars within which a planet simply cannot exist for a long period of time. What's interesting about the circumbinary planets is that as soon as you get outside that radius of instability, you find planets quite regularly. They're not especially rare. You don't have to look very far out in the system. You just have to look barely a little bit further than where they can't exist, and then you start finding these planets. And that tells me that these planets must be very common. The processes that make these planets must be such that it's not so unusual because we see them just as soon as we could possibly see them as we move out further from 
the centers of the systems. And that, um, that is some kind of an interesting clue about how these planets form or what happens to them after they form. One question we have about circumbinary planets is about the geometry of their orbits. If the stars themselves are orbiting like this, must it be the case that the planet's orbit is in the same plane? Or can you have planetary orbits that are strongly inclined relative to the plane of the two stars? We really don't know yet. The way that we're discovering circumbinary planets relies on eclipses. And in order to have eclipses, they must be aligned with one another. Otherwise, the planet would not regularly eclipse the two stars. So you're much more likely to discover a coplanar system than you would be an inclined system. That doesn't mean the inclined systems don't exist. It just means that the way that we're studying them right now has this limitation that it's strongly biased towards these coplanar systems. So we're trying to figure out ways to enlarge our search so that we can be sensitive to a wider variety of different types of geometry to see if they exist. And that would, if we could detect them or rule them out, that would be another clue about how these systems form. If they all are coplanar and aligned with one another, that suggests that both stars and the planet all formed from a single disk of material, and they've inherited that sense of direction from that single disk. Whereas if we find that it's more common or just as common to have planets going every which way around these two stars, that suggests maybe the planet was captured from a different system or formed in some completely different way than planets around single stars formed. The question of how circumbinary planets form is related to the question of how binary stars form in the first place. Why do we have, so commonly, two stars that are orbiting each other very closely? That too is an unsolved problem in astronomy. We see examples of nebulae in space where stars are forming, and we think we have a good idea that sometimes in these clouds of material, you can have two or three clumps of material that form into stars in close proximity to each other, but it's still a challenge to get them to form so close to one another that they end up in these tight little orbits that are only a few days or weeks or months in, in duration. So that is an unsolved problem in itself. And then the problem on top of that is when you do have one of these very tight binary star systems, how do you form planets around them? One idea is for forming close binary stars is that you start off with a very wide binary star system, one that can easily form just randomly inside a star-forming region. But then you have a third star, a third star which is only weakly bound to these two stars and that is able to exchange energy and angular momentum with the two stars in this wide binary. And it can do so if it has the right properties, if it's, or if it's placed in the right direction. It, that interaction between the third star and the two stars in the binary can extract energy from this binary orbit and cause it to tighten and become a tight little orbit here. And then that third star we might never notice. It, it's so weakly bound. If that's the case, if that's the way that close binary stars form, one would expect that planets, at least planets at normal orbital distances, should be quite rare around these binary stars because the binary stars used to be much further apart and there's no, there was no room for them to have formed a planet in this zone of uh, distances where we're used to seeing planets because the stars themselves used to occupy that area. So if we find lots of circumbinary planets around very tight binaries like this, that would be evidence against a scenario like that. We would have to rethink our ideas about how binary stars form. The discovery of circumbinary planets is still in a very early stage. We only know of about 10 binary star systems that have planets going around both stars. And of those, in all but one case, I believe, there's only one planet that's known. And that planet exists in the very innermost orbit that it could possibly exist in and still be stable. However, there is one system that's become known as Kepler-47 where there is more than one planet going around a pair of stars. And that's interesting. It, it suggests that maybe 
uh, planetary systems of nine or ten planets exist around pairs of stars or even triples of stars. It's just that we have to be patient. It's, it's much more difficult to discover the distant planets than it is the closer planets. In, in these, the methods that we have for studying planets, it's always easier to study the innermost planets and characterize them first, and then we gradually become more and more sensitive to the wider orbiting, slower orbiting planets that exist on the outside. There's no reason to think that there aren't multiple planets surrounding pairs of stars very commonly. So there may be out there somewhere a, another star system that's very similar to the solar system in many respects, has Earth-like planets, has giant planets far away, has asteroid belts, but at the center of it all is a pair of stars that orbit one another every week rather than having just a single star. To me, the meaning of the circumbinary planets is that um, the full range of possibilities for planetary systems is very wide. And planetary systems don't have to resemble the solar system at all in even the most fundamental respect, which is of having one star at the center of it all. It also suggests that we should look to science fiction for some ideas about what that range of possibilities is. And this is an example where the science fiction authors uh, got there first and anticipated some real properties of exoplanetary systems. <laughs>